As someone who has spent over a decade in the luxury fashion community, I have learned a couple of things of where I think it's worth the splurge and where I think I'm better off not swiping my card. Welcome back to my channel, I'm Amanda. Today we're gonna talk about how I build my luxury wardrobe in an impactful way. If you're also keen on doing that, you've come to the right place. Let's get right into it, shall we? So, a wardrobe obviously has a few different categories, right? We have clothing, we have bags, we have shoes, we have all the little fun accessories. And honestly, some of these things, I think you don't have to go the luxury route. Or first off, I mean, we never have to go the luxury route. This is literally like the frivolous, fun, over the top, over the top, right? Spending that we don't actually need, but we find enjoyable or fun. But if we want to build our luxury collection, where do I actually think it's worth splurging? And for me, the number one splurge is always handbags. That's what kind of got me into this whole luxury fashion scene. I mean, I have filmed the luxury handbag collection, and at this point, I think I have 18 designer handbags. Handbags. And obviously I have splurged big time on some handbags and I have splurged a little bit less on others. I mean, we don't always have to go the kind of super splurge route and go for like something like a Birkin, right? Because this is obviously a splurge in capital letters. And to be honest, I mean, I spoke about this in my least used designer bag video as well. I mean, I don't really get the use out of this bag that it deserves, right? So when I say splurge on handbags, I don't necessarily mean splurge on Birkins, right? On the contrary, I mean, one of my most used designer bags in my collection is my Saint Laurent Sac de Giornano. I mean, this bag, honestly, I get so much use out of. It's definitely not like a Birkin type splurge, right? It's a little bit more affordable if we want to put it like that in terms of designer handbags. So, I mean, in the categories of splurge, we also have different levels, right? And that's fine. But if I am going to splurge in one category, it is handbags. And to caveat this as well, I think splurging in classic timeless designer bags for me is worth it. If you have a big collection, it might also be worth it to splurge on more seasonal pieces. I have one here to show you as well. This is a little Saint Laurent bag in green velvet and gold hardware. For me, this is definitely like a seasonal piece. I mean, I wear it in the holidays type seasons and I wear it in the fall, kind of cold weather type occasions, right? But this one does not see the light of day a lot during like the summer and spring months. So if you have a big collection, then it might also be worthwhile splurging on the types of kind of more niche or seasonal pieces. But if you're not intending on building a larger collection, then I would recommend you to stay in the kind of more timeless, kind of classic, kind of not seasonal pieces to get the most wear out of your wardrobe. And then for the seasonal pieces, maybe not splurging in the designer or luxury category, right? Like I said, I have a little bit of a collection, so I do have a couple of seasonal pieces. And for me, I think that's okay. And if you're in a similar spot, then sis, I get you. Go Good for you, hope you enjoy your seasonal pieces as well. But when talking about building an impactful closet of luxury items, I would say you're better off splurging in the more non-seasonal, classic, kind of wear all year round type bags. And with that said, let's move on to the next category of our closets. And an obvious category to talk about when talking about building an impactful wardrobe is clothing, right? And for me, clothing depends a little bit on what type of clothing we're talking about. And I like to break it up into sections. So on one section, we have our like day-to-day -day clothing. On the other section, we have our outerwear. Let's just first talk about the day-to-day -day clothing because if I'm being completely honest, even though I have a few designer items of clothing in my wardrobe, I don't really think the designer clothing route is worth 
with this splurge. And what I mean by that is essentially that I would rather stay away from the designer type labels and on the day-to-day -day side of the wardrobe I would rather focus on the fabrics and the material and how something is sewn and you know that type of stuff instead of looking at what is the label. I'm not saying you're not paying for that label when it comes to designer bags because you obviously do but for me a designer bag is a different level of splurge than a normal clothing item. If you're in the luxury fashion community then you might get it and if you don't agree that is totally fine. Please let me know what you disagree with in the comments because I would love to know. I would love to have a discussion on it. So the materials that I appreciate in clothing just for reference obviously something like cashmere or linen or cotton or wool or merino wool or you know those natural type of fibers right that's what I feel like is high perceived value for me and kind of the types of materials that usually stand the test of time on the other hand I'm not so keen on the materials like polyester and elastane and you know those kinds of man-made fibers or materials that usually kind of don't really hold up in the wash and they have to be washed more often because they start smelling a little bit weird when you've worn it a few times which is not the case on the natural fiber side usually and maybe just for reference I mean I do have some designer clothing like I said right these are Saint Laurent jeans I spoke about them in my Saint Laurent collection video where I ranked them essentially from most worn to least worn and these are the least worn item in my Saint Laurent collection and I mean there's nothing wrong with them but I mean essentially it's just a pair of like 100% cotton jeans and 100% cotton jeans I mean I can get from a brand like Levi's for example I mean they're not the cheapest jean on the market but equally they're one of those like timeless classic brands of jeans that won't break the bank and they're known to be of great quality right at least from my experience and I mean the price difference between the Saint Laurent jeans and the Levi's jeans is just ridiculous right and essentially at the end of the day the Saint Laurent jeans is 100% cotton with a fancy little tag in them right the leather tag even and the little like gold chain how fancy but essentially I mean the Levi's jeans will do the same job I mean they might not have the gold golden chain and the leather tab but at the end of the day the pants are both 100% cotton right so for me I think I would rather go the type of Levi's route of jeans than the Saint Laurent route so hopefully that gives some indication of how I think when it comes to clothing I mean I look at the material first look at the stitching look how well made it feels to be and since I mean you put your clothes in the washing machine right and I at least wear my clothing a lot I wear it multiple times right so I want it to stand the test of time and be of great quality and that's kind of my thought process of why I think the day-to-day -day clothing might not be worth it for me to buy designer items with that higher price tag even if the materials are great quality you know because I can buy those great quality materials at a much more affordable price elsewhere let's move on to the outerwear part of the clothing category and outerwear is something where I actually do feel like it's worth the splurge and when I speak about outerwear wardrobes I speak mainly about coats because I am a huge fan of a good quality coat. I mean it's something that if you buy a classic style you can have for years and years and years like your whole lifetime right I mean when you walk outside your coat is literally everything people see from your outfit apart from your handbag and your shoes and all of that right I mean building on my last point on the like day-to-day -day clothing items you don't really put your coat through the washing machine right so there for me at least that is kind of the divider of where I think I'm okay to splurge and where I'm not okay to splurge right? I have two Max Mara wool coats, I have one Burberry wool coat, I have one Burberry trench coat, and all of these coats I feel like are in very classic styles. I feel like they will stand the test of time. The quality of the material is so nice, the stitching is literally pristine. I can send these coats in like once a year after the winter and fall season to have them dry cleaned and make them actually stand the test of time as well. And for me, a good quality 
coat is definitely worth the splurge. With that said, I mean, you obviously don't have to go the designer route. I have done that because for me, I feel like Burberry and Max Mara are the coat brands for me. And I do appreciate their craftsmanship and the history of the brands and all of that, right? Obviously, you can buy a great quality wool coat at a lower price if you don't want to go that luxury route. But in my humble opinion and from my wardrobe, the Burberry coats and the Max Mara coats are worth the splurge and their items which I will keep in my wardrobe forever essentially. So another wardrobe accessory I want to talk about is belts. And for me personally, I don't really appreciate a logo belt. And why is that you may ask? Well, let me tell you. Because I mean when you see someone's outfit and they have like a huge logo in the middle of their body, like that logo is literally everything I see. I mean it's literally, like literally in the middle of their body. So whatever else they're wearing, all I see is that logo belt. And I say this with the least shade possible, but that's my experience personally. And that's why I don't really like wearing designer belts because usually where I would rather have a logo is on my bag. And that doesn't necessarily have to be like in the center of attention of my wardrobe, right? I do appreciate a good quality belt. I do have two belts here with me today. One is designer and one is not designer. Even though I use my Saint Laurent belt a lot and I really love it, I think you can get away with buying a high quality belt from somewhere else than a luxury house. Essentially here we have two black belts, right, with kind of gunmetal colored buckles. And I mean these two belts styled in an outfit, if the thickness were the exact same, then these belts would give off the exact same effect in the outfit, right? The upper belt here is just like a 100% leather belt bought from a no-name brand. The other belt, obviously the python print, gives off a little bit of another aesthetic, but I mean the buckle is still a gunmetal buckle. But I mean, essentially, the belts are very, very similar, right? And the no-name brand belt is obviously a fraction of the price of the Saint Laurent belt. So if you want to build an impactful wardrobe with the least amount of investment, I would say you're better off buying a no-name brand, just high-quality leather belt and calling it a day and not going like the designer route. But obviously, if you do appreciate a logo belt, you want that Gucci vibe or that Louis Vuitton or a mess vibe on your outfit. I get it. I mean, it's not for me personally, but I can appreciate that vibe for other people. In my humble opinion, belts is one of the categories where I don't necessarily think it is worth the designer level splurge. Let's talk about shoes, shall we? So shoes is one of those topics where I also think it depends a little bit. I mean, for sneakers and casual day-to-day -day shoes, I think designer shoes are nice, but I don't necessarily think they're actually worth the splurge. And hear me out. Like my most worn sneakers are the Saint Laurent white sneakers with that red and blue stripe. I think they're gorgeous. I think they're great quality. I mean, it's a leather sneaker with some suede on it. And don't get me wrong, the sneakers are really, really nice and I appreciate wearing them. But if you wanna build an impactful wardrobe, I think you can get the same effect from like a non-luxury house store, right? I mean, you can buy like a cool pair of Converse, a nice Air Force One. What else do people wear? Like New Balances or like Adidas sneakers or what have you, right? I mean, there are so many cool like lower end brand sneakers or like actual sports brand sneakers that give you the same effect of a white sneaker. So on the sneaker front, if you're looking for building an impactful wardrobe, you get the same impact from any other white sneaker, right? But I am a bit of an oxymoron here because I do have my Saint Laurent sneakers and I wear them a lot. But regardless, let's move on before this becomes awkward. <laughs> Somewhere where I think it's actually worth the splurge in the shoe department is boots. And why I say that is because boots for me is one of those items which, I mean, in the winter and fall season, I live in Sweden, right? So winter and fall is literally like 70% of the year. I wear boots on a daily basis for most of the year. And that's why I think a high quality boot is definitely worth the splurge. 
My favorite designer brand for boots is Stuart Weitzman. This is not sponsored. I really wish it was though. <laughs> Stuart Weitzman, sponsor me, please. <laughs> but I think a designer boot in a high quality material in like a timeless, classic, classy, well-fitting style on you is worth the splurge any day. I've talked about my Stuart Weitzman 50-50 boots my highland boots, my lowland boots. I have a few ankle booties, like a pair of velvet ankle booties from Stuart Weitzman, a pair of suede ankle booties from Stuart Weitzman. And I've had all of these boots for years and I bring them out season after season. And I feel like even though people say that over the knee boots are kind of out of fashion, I mean, I do beg to differ because over the knee boots, I feel like they're always kind of relevant in the fashion scene in my humble opinion and also also, they do come back kind of in a cyclical manner kind of often I have found or maybe that's just me because I have two that's four I have two pairs of Stuart Weitzman over the knee boots the Highland and the Lowland and for me personally I feel like they're always a vibe when I bring them out in the fall and winter season and in my experience the Stuart Weitzman boots I mean the quality of those is literally unmatched but I am very keen to hear if you have any brands that are kind of on the lower end in terms of price, but still on that high level of quality, right? In terms of material and stitching and, and craftsmanship and, and all of that type of stuff, right? If you do know of any such brands, please let me know in the comments. I'm so keen to hear about it because with this list as well, I mean, do feel free to prove me wrong by commenting your favorite brands. I would love to look into them because if I can build an impactful wardrobe without spending that designer money, I'm all here for it, right? Because obviously you and I, we're not really those types of luxury influencers that get sponsored by all the brands, right? So we have to prioritize where we spend our hard earned money when we want to build our impactful wardrobes and inject some designer stuff and make use of the designer items we buy. But that's enough of my rant. I mean, I do quickly want to mention heels as well. I'm not one of these people who wears heels a lot in my day-to-day -day life, I must admit. I do have some designer heels. I mean, specifically, you've seen my Manolo Blonix quite a few times on this channel. I do love those. But to be honest, since I don't really wear heels, in my day-to-day -day life that often, then I don't really feel like spending designer money on a lot of pairs of heels is worth it for me, right? But if I buy a pair of like suede black heels from Jimmy Choo or Louboutin, or pick your favorite brand and insert it here, right? Or I buy that same style of like black suede heel from like Aquasura or Mosh or any of the other type of like lower end brands, then I honestly get the same MB impact on my outfit. I feel like for me designer heels are not worth the splurge since I don't really go anywhere that requires a lot of fancy heels, right? <laughs> yeah, that's sad. So let's have a quick chat about smaller accessories. I mean small leather goods, SLGs like we like to call them in this community, and jewelry. First off let's talk about jewelry because here I feel like buying designer brands of jewelry is not worth the splurge. Yes, that might sound a little bit weird since I'm literally always wearing my Click H bracelets from Hermes, but if we're talking about the actual quality you get of the item from a designer brand versus what you would get in going to something like a jeweler and buying like precious metal jewelry, then buying something like this for me, I don't think is worth the actual money, right? If you want to buy high quality jewelry. I mean, if I just talk about my own jewelry, right? I do have some rings of precious metals with like actual like precious stones and stuff like this. And I mean, in comparison, these types of bracelets, I mean, they're, they cost a lot of money for the materials that you buy. Obviously, jewelry with precious metal costs money as well, but you don't have that markup from being a designer brand if you go to a normal jeweler and buy something of high quality and great craftsmanship and stuff like this, but from a no-name brand. So if you want to get the most kind of impact on jewelry, I would say stay away from designer brands and go the jeweler route instead. And similarly on watches, I would say the same thing. I would
would rather go to a watchmaker and buy my watch there than actually go the designer route. So for example, I mean something like an Omega watch, which is what I wear on a day-to-day -day basis. It's probably approximately the same price as something like a Gucci watch, right? But my Omega watch has like the actual movement and watchmaking history and kind of, I don't know the terminology of watches, but you know, it has the like actual like automatic movement and it has like I don't know, everything that should be in a watch, which I feel like something like a Gucci watch is probably marking up the price a lot because of the brand and not necessarily because of the watch quality. So for me, watches is also one of those things where I don't think the designer brands are worth the splurge, but the actual like watchmaker brands, which are also designer brands, but in the luxury community, we usually talk about like the Louis Vuittons, the Gucci's, the Hermes, the Chanel, whatever, right? And maybe not so much about the Omegas and the Longines and the Rolexes and Patek or whatever you wanna buy, right? I have to roll up my sleeves. I feel like I'm getting so warm from like making all of these disclaimers. I feel like I have to make a disclaimer on every statement so that I don't step on someone's toes right and say the wrong thing but I'm not sure if I actually need to do that or if that is just my mentality of people being like all up in the cancel culture I'm not sure but yeah rolling up my sleeves because I mean disclaimers are hard work <laughs> <laughs> so on to SLGs or small leather goods. <sighs> Honestly, in building an impactful wardrobe, I don't really think SLGs have the most impact. With that being said, I do have a few SLGs, like for example, my Louis Vuitton key and card holder. That, I mean, is an impactful piece because let me just show you. I mean, literally, my favorite SLG and the one that I do think is worth the splurge is my Louis Vuitton key and card holder. I mean, obviously it's generally a key holder, right? But here in the back, if you can see, you have a little pocket and there I keep my cards. So this SLG specifically is definitely one that I am happy I have. I think it was worth the splurge because I think it's such a timeless piece. I've had it for literally years and it's still going strong. The quality is great. I use it on a day-to-day -day basis because obviously when I leave my house, I take this one and I have both my keys and my cards I've spoken about this at length in other videos. I'm not gonna ramble on, but this specific SLG, major key alert. You need this. Everyone needs this. Everyone should have one of these. But in terms of other SLGs, I'm not really a fan, to be honest. I mean, if I'm gonna build an impactful wardrobe, I would rather spend my hard-earned money on something like a designer bag than something like a designer pouch to have inside my bag, you know? Does that make sense to you as well? I mean, there are so many like high quality makeup bags that are not designer or like canvas print of a monogram or something like that, right? Hmm, <clears throat> Louis Vuitton. <laughs> and it's inside the actual bag, right? And if something was to spill in my designer makeup bag, oh my God, I would be furious. <laughs> so I feel like that type of item, which gets a lot of wear, it's kind of like a high risk item as well, right? In case something spills or something breaks or you know, that type of stuff. So SLGs, I mean, I would rather buy a no name brand, still high quality makeup bag so that I can have it for years and years. But for me, SLGs, apart from apart from the major key alert, which is the key and card holder from Louis Vuitton or whichever brand you want to buy. I mean, it doesn't have to be Louis Vuitton, obviously. Back with these disclaimers, I'm sweating. <laughs> Uh, how do people do this? But regardless, SLGs for me are not worth the splurge in terms of building an impactful wardrobe. And those were all of the actual like wardrobe categories I wanted to talk about. One thing though I think is worth mentioning is taking care of your items and making sure they fit you and fit your lifestyle. Anytime I make a purchase, no matter if it's an Hermes Birkin or if it's a t-shirt in the thrift shop, I do have one thought process that I always go through and it's can I style this item in five ways with items I already have in my wardrobe? And if the answer to that question is no, then no, Amanda, you cannot swipe your card. Put the card back in your card holder 
and walk away point blank and i think that question has saved me from making so many bad purchases because obviously sometimes we get swept away by how cute or how cool or how fun an item is but if i'm not actually gonna get wear out of it then it's not worth any type of splurge not even if it's five dollars we don't want items in our wardrobes that we don't wear that is not impactful and that is not sustainable that's not sustainable in an economical or in an environmental sense, right? Amen. You know that triangle, like the reduce, reuse, recycle type of stuff? That is the top one. The most important one, reduce. We don't buy stuff that we don't wear. The second one, reuse, is also one that we need to talk about. And what do I mean by that? Yes, buying secondhand or pre-loved as we like to call it in this community, right? And for me, every time I want to buy something, I check secondhand first. Because for me, I mean, I rarely buy anything if we're gonna be completely honest and this is a safe space right so no judgment here i never buy anything out of necessity anymore because obviously i do have a lot of things right okay yeah fine maybe i need to buy like a white t-shirt or a pair of black jeans or something because they've gone through the wash just a few too many times but i mean if i'm going out shopping and looking at designer bags i don't buy it because i need them i buy them because i want them and a want and a need those two things are very different, right? So when I'm wanting, not needing, when I'm wanting to buy something, I always check secondhand first, right? Because I mean, I'm not in a rush. If I can find it secondhand, then it's more sustainable, both environmentally and economically, usually. So why not kind of go that, you know, the reduce, reuse, recycle? Why not go that reuse route and be kind to the environment? And making that splurge, I'm ready to make a little bit smaller in terms of actual like monetary value, right? So shopping pre-loved, or secondhand, I think is also a major key alert. Why do I refer to rappers always in my videos? This is kind of embarrassing. <laughs> shout out to DJ Khaled. <laughs> you would never watch this, but if you do, shout out. But a major key alert action is checking secondhand or pre-loved first, because then we can be kinder to our wallets and kinder to the environment at the same time. And why wouldn't we want to do that, right? Right. And talking about being kinder to the environment and to our wallets is another thing that I think is so worth the investment. And that is taking your clothes to the tailor. Taking your clothes to the tailor. For you guys in the back, did you hear me? Taking your clothes to the tailor. Make your clothing fit you. If it's broken, mend it. Don't buy something new. Go to the actual seamstress or tailor in your local city. It's not even that expensive, right? If we buy an item that is of high quality, it's of great quality material, the actual item is made to last, it's one of those pieces that fits you really nicely, but maybe it's just something that's a little bit off. Just take it to the tailor, ask them kindly to fix it for you. And that way you can make your clothing one, I mean, be tailored exactly to you, which I think makes your clothing look so much more expensive. It fits you perfectly. So you feel great in it as well. It looks so chic. You look literally like a million bucks when you have something that fits you perfectly. It's it's a great quality material. It doesn't have to be designer, right? As long as it fits you great and you feel great, that's what's the most important. And a tailor can help you achieve that look, right? So guys, I've been rambling on for way too long just to round this whole thing up. I mean, bags are my number one splurge. I'm a sucker for a good designer handbag. In terms of clothing, I don't think designer clothing is worth the splurge for me personally. I do, however, think that outerwear such as coats is worth the splurge because that's something that I wear for years and years and years and I don't put it in the washing machine, right? So I don't have to have a heart attack every time I need to wash something. Please and thank you. Accessories in terms of belt, I don't necessarily think going the designer route is impactful. In terms of SLGs, not so much either apart from the key and card holder. Jewelry, I think you're better off going to the jeweler. Watches, go to the watchmaker. Shoes, I mean, I love a designer sneaker, but I don't think they're necessarily worth going the designer route in terms of the impact you're getting from the shoes. Boots, I do love a designer boot. I do think it's worth splurge. Heels, 
we all know I don't go anywhere. I'm not cool enough. So for me, designer heels, even though I have some, I don't think are necessarily that impactful and kind of worth the designer splurge. And regardless of designer brand or not, I think it's worthwhile to get the highest quality item within your budget that you can get. And if you can, check secondhand to both save on the environment and your wallet. And lastly, tailoring. Please and thank you. Make sure that you take care of your items, mend them if they break, have them tailored to fit you exactly. And obviously, for me personally, I don't buy anything unless I feel like I can style it in at least five ways. I mean, anything was a little bit of an exaggeration. I mean, I don't think about if I can style my broccoli in five different ways, right? But if we're talking about the designer fashion type scene, right? <laughs> hmm, how can I style this broccoli, actually? I can style it with tofu, I can style it with potatoes, maybe hummus. <laughs> no, we don't do that, but you get what I'm saying. The designer fashion type world, right? And now let's roll our sleeves back down because now I'm done with all of these disclaimers. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you some intel in my thought process of what I think is worth the splurge in terms of designer items and which items I would rather buy from non-designer brands. Do you resonate with any of these? Do you agree? Do you have any differing opinions? Please leave your suggestions, your ideas, your learnings down in the comments and we'll have a chat in the comments together. And until my next video, stay safe, take care and see you soon. Bye!